Welcome to the TAF Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by TAF Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the TAF Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. As you know, the TAF Hub is one of the initiatives under the TAF Africa Foundation. And we are trying to inspire the youth of this country. We cannot do all this by ourselves. So we look out to Gambians who are doing so well in the diaspora and about common holidays to the Gambia. If you know anybody that can inspire the youth that is doing so well in their own areas, please send us an email on this email that's shown on the, the screen. Welcome to the Starfish Land. This is where the ultimate vision is supposed to happen. So we're hoping that someday we'll have an academy here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so, um, uh, yeah, I was just asking them, how, how big is the land? It's eight hectares. Eight hectares, okay. So, eight so, hectares. so what have you done so far with it? Now that it's, it's a virgin land. We have cashew trees and mango trees. These are all exportable mangoes and then with the cashews. And now we are just impacting it. So we have uh, papaya, moringa, we have oranges. And then now we're going to start a poultry, we're going to do livestock. So that what we want to do is have it be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So when we have the animals, the manure from it will go into the plants and then um, for now, at the, this very moment, and we're building a processing center so okay. that everything we do can be processed. But for now, we just want to reach out to the women in the neighborhood to mm -hmm. come here and see that this is theirs. So whatever cashew they get, mm -hmm. it's divided into thirds. So mm -hmm. for every two mm -hmm. that starfish gets, they get one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and then they can take ownership of the land and understand the benefits. But it's going to be, um, it's going to be poultry, livestock, it's going to be fruits and vegetables. It's going to be a fish pond. And then we are also going to have processing done here. And on the other side, we're going to have the starfish boarding school. And we're also going to have um, a retreat because it's so big. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. can have a meditation retreat center where people can come and rest and relax. But also um, it's 3000 steps around. So you can take prayer walks, meditation walks. We just want it to be a sustainable development that the locals can relate to. I mean, you took me to a parcel of land that you have in Lamim. Yes. You know, by the way, when we were going, you know, uh, I was asking, um, I think, uh, my PA, where are we heading to? You know, it was so bushy, taking all the tracks. Yes. But, but, but tell us what your dream is about this land. So it doesn't make sense in the starfish way of thinking about things, not to take care of education, agriculture, and health. Mm -hmm. all as a tripod, right? It doesn't make sense to just focus on education because if that student is hungry, if that student is worried about food, or if that student is sick, they cannot learn. So the land and agriculture, particularly in the Gambia, it makes perfect sense that we are able to leverage the rich land that we have to help ourselves to support young people, to take the stigma away from farming and to see how profitable it is. And so that's really part of what the land is for. Uh, but in addition to just gardening and farming and selling those crops, we want to look at the trees on the land, the, the mahogany trees, the kennel trees, the fig trees, and look at our history. How is it connected to the flora and fauna of this country? And what does that ask us in terms of development? Mm -hmm. We also want to have a space there, a meditation center, uh, a rest area there where people, when they're stressed out in their lives, can go away into the bush, what mm -hmm. is known as the bush, and then to be able to just rejuvenate. And, and we also want to look at sustainable development. How are we connecting education to sustainable development and sustainable technologies? So solar power, 
or when we look at all the twigs that we use for the charcoal, mm -hmm. how do we teach the students that our grandparents and great grandparents are doing physics and chemistry um, with charcoal making? And how does that inform their sense of history and their pride in who they are as Africans and how smart we have always been? And finally, we want that land to be a human library. Mm -hmm because it's so big and it's so beautiful and it's so shaded. So people like you, if a student said, I want to have a personal interaction with somebody who grew up in skills and has come back to develop this nation, we will call you and call the student and there'll be a private area where they can sit and talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And then if they say, I want to talk to somebody who has been raped, in a private area. So this is not a place where you would just go get a book. We will have books there and mm -hmm. a library there, but also a human library where they can have the privacy mm -hmm. in order to interact with real live people who are really the librarians and the custodians of this culture. So right. those are the so, plans for the land. But, but those are the plans, but do you have any ongoing projects now? Yes. So as we speak. every project at Starfish has to sustain itself. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the land and all the things we want to build there, yes, we're hoping that people will invest and funding will come, mm -hmm. but we have to start by showing what mm -hmm. we can do. So we've started a banana plantation there. We've started a, an orange plantation there, a papaya plantation there, and we've started a, a vegetable garden there. And then in the next year, we're expanding to pigeons and we're expanding to rabbits. We're going to do fish farming, and we're also going to do poultry. So by December, January, we want to get our people trained in poultry, and then we're already building the, the housing for the rabbits and for the pigeons. Wow, excellent. I mean, that's all part of um, my next question, which is your vision, your staff's vision for agriculture. So the staff's vision for agriculture is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. It's that when you do gardening and farming right, you should be able to feed yourself completely. You should be able to share it in different ways, financially with those around you. We have a, a big tourism industry here. There is no reason why we cannot provide for those hotels. There is no reason why oranges should be exported from outside. All the things that we, onions, you name it, Everything that we export, we can actually put our young people to work. They can feed themselves and their families. The extra can be sold and then invested back into the community and the country. So that's really one of the goals right now for the vision of agriculture. The second one is people have to have a place to go and train and to see it work. And the land is big enough to do that. And thirdly, you learn best what you grow up with. And so we're going to do a boys academy and a girls academy there where most of the time, if you look at education, if it's a prestigious place, you usually just have kids from rich families. We believe that kids from financially challenged families have a lot to teach kids from um, financially comfortable families. Mm -hmm. And so what can a kid from a poor family, if you will, teach somebody about resilience, about working hard, and so on and so forth. So we hope this is a place where people can come and get not only training, but be exposed to people they normally wouldn't interact with and use that learning to go back into their communities. So people can come to the Gambia and actually take stuff out of the Gambia that they can buy from agriculture to other products instead of us just getting from other places. Actually, I want to come in here and I, I totally agree with you. Um, if you ask me today, if you give me money to, mm -hmm. to invest in any sector, mm -hmm. I will definitely put in agriculture. Yeah. I, and the same, question, the same thing that's happening to you, I'm just asking myself that question, why can't we? Mm -hmm. And I think in leadership, that's one thing that we need to encourage. Yeah. People must ask this question. And a very good question to be asked you know, globally today is, why is Ukraine, yeah. small Ukraine, mm -hmm. you know, controlling all our feeding? Yeah. Why is the world crying because there's a war in Ukraine? When Ukraine, I mean, is smaller than even Nigeria. Right. And there are 54 other countries. Why can't we grow what we eat? Typically in the Gambia, I mean, as we all know, uh, during the rainy season and beyond, mm -hmm. everywhere you go is green. Right. So why can't we just toil that soil that just grows wild grass mm -hmm. into something that is edible? 
or something that we can use, you know, something that we can, we can eat or we can export. Why do we have to bring in our vegetables from, from neighboring countries? Right. That question must be asked and answered. So, and for me as an entrepreneur, you know, as an entrepreneur, what I think is how do I turn this into money? Right. So I hope the ears are listening. That well, we need to focus on agriculture, agriculture, and agriculture, not real estate. It's agriculture. Yeah. Agriculture is the area that we need to focus in. And I, I, I'm sure you, you, you're dying to say something well, about yes. agriculture. You know, because, <laughs> you know uh, my biased answer is because of the, the type of education that we need. Yeah. Ukraine can leverage that because they know the value. If you ask somebody what is the value of Findi, Mm -hmm. What is the value of our traditional grains? Mm -hmm. What is the value of our agricultural products? What is organic farming? What, how, what place does it hold in the world economy? We don't know. Mm -hmm. so if we don't know, if we knew really who we were and how rich we are and how much God has given us, how good our soil is, what is good soil, what is sustainable farming, mm -hmm. if this was part of our educational system, what is our history? And if it was taught from birth, mm -hmm. from when you are young, you have a kitchen garden mm -hmm. right there in front of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then you know, and then that is even connected to spirituality. Like what is pruning? Mm -hmm. Pruning is, is disciplining. Mm -hmm. How do you guide a young tree? How do you guide a young plant? Mm -hmm. All of these are interconnected. But until our educational system, and I don't just mean school system, mm -hmm. I mean what we teach people, ed mm -hmm. our education is so much more than just sitting in the classroom. Until that is taken care of, we will continue to just shoot ourselves in the foot. Like it's the donkey with the books on its back mm -hmm. and doesn't know the value of the knowledge that it is carrying. And until we can learn that, and that is part of it. And the second part of it is the integrity, mm -hmm. right? When resources come, how do we use those resources? Because material development, just going after money, doesn't work unless you have the spiritual development going side by side with it. So how honest are we? How not corrupt are we? Mm -hmm. How fair are we? How mm -hmm. just are we? And those are all taught as well. And of course, I believe if the mother teaches to the it to the children, mm -hmm. the children learn it from birth, and that's why girls' education. Right? Wow! Again, that's on leadership. So, 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 what's the need for a different leadership training model, like servant leadership approach? Right. So servant leadership approach is this idea that leadership is not about the position. Mm -hmm. It's sweat, blood, and tears, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That it's going to be really, really hard. And that's sometimes what we don't tell young people. People come into the leadership space because they have this boss mentality. But how are you going to put in the sacrifice, understand that you're going to be vulnerable, understand that it's not about you, and at the end of the day, that you are best at leading from behind because the community you come in to serve know the answers. They might not have the resources, but they know what to do. And trusting in that and walking side by side with them is really what servant leadership is about. Great. So, so what has been your biggest achievement since inception? Biggest achievement has been the graduates of Starfish mm -hmm. who have gone into other places to work in the Gambia and outside the Gambia and has shown this integrity that what they say they're going to do, they're going to do. And that when they come into a community, they will leave that community better than they found it. And the part that I'm proudest of is that Starfish is largely run by 40 young people who have come into Starfish, gained from its educational programming and come back to run it. So there's no better testimony than the fact that somebody struggles, they have an opportunity to build themselves, and they believe in that system enough to come back and run that system. Okay, great. So but let's talk about challenges now. <laughs> so, so, so what has been the challenges and, and how have you tackled them? So the challenges is, you know, change and growth mm -hmm. um, is always uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for example, when I talk about a different educational system, if you're used to sitting in the classroom and memorizing things, and you come to Starfish and we say, okay, we're going to talk about sickle cell, but we want you to go back and look at all the information you have in English about sickle cell. Mm -hmm. And we want you to translate it into the local languages using music and dance and drama. Because in this culture, Theater is a big deal. Music is a big deal. When you go into a community to talk about something, if you beat the drums, everybody comes out. 
if we're doing that educational process at Starfish and somebody outside hears it, mm -hmm. they think, oh, people, these kids just drum and dance every time at Starfish. They're not doing anything else. Yeah, yeah. And so dealing with the parents about that had been a challenge. And so we have an open door policy where parents can come in at any time and see what we're doing. The other one is when you say service into the community and that this is not a free ride. We're really used to students coming in, going and getting a scholarship, and that just means somebody pays for you. Mm -hmm. At Starfish, that is not possible. You get a scholarship. First of all, we pay the scholarship at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And then, so you have to do the work before you get the scholarship. But if you get the scholarship, it also means no matter how young you are, you have to start your own small business. Mm -hmm. Whether it's butterscotch, whether it's soap making, it doesn't matter. You have to start making money to help yourself. And then you also have to do service projects within the community. So if your street is dirty, you have to clean the street. If there are older people in your community who can't go to the well or the tap to get water, your service project can be to help those. If there's teenage pregnancy in your neighborhood, what can you do to educate against that? And so with all of those, people usually struggle and say, the students can't pay attention mm. and still run a small business and do service projects. It's too much. Mm -hmm. The problem is the rest of the world, the people that they're competing with, are doing this. They have paper routes. They have small businesses growing up. So our kids are proof that we can do it and we're doing it. And then the final challenge, I think, is just around funding. Mm -hmm. I find that there is when it comes to the funding area, I want people to see the work that we're doing and see where they connect to that work and then how they can benefit as well mm -hmm. from being with the work. I don't want anybody who feels sorry for poor kids to come and work with us mm -hmm. because I think the opposite of poverty is dignity. Mm -hmm. And the dignity of these young people and what they will add to your life if you work with them is what I want you to see and respect. Mm -hmm. And that means people have to get out of their comfort zones and come to us to see the work. Don't just send money. And usually, I find that funding is about who you know, at least in the Gambia, about who you know, what groups you're in, what connections you have. And because we're in the village doing the work, we're usually not in the corporate offices <laughs> yeah. with the networking and yeah. all of that. So people come to us the way they're supposed to come to us, but it makes our work slower because we're not out there hustling for the money. But it will come, don't worry. I it think will so. come, yeah. <laughs> but tell us, um, uh, how, how can one become either a student or a volunteer at Starfish? So when we um, do interviews, every year we do interviews and we pick our students. Our mentors actually go to schools and communities and talk about Starfish. And the students who have been in the program go out and talk about Starfish. And we invite people to come in for interviews. When they come for interviews, they have to come not only to tell us what they're good at, but they have to showcase a skill or a talent. So if you say, my skill is storytelling, then we will help you leverage storytelling into money making. Mm. If you say, my skill is braiding, we'll help you do that at any point during the program. So you do an interview, and then when you're accepted, we talk to your parents, because not only do you have to serve your community, but your parents have to join you in serving your community. So we have parent service hours as well. So when they come and their parents come and they understand the level of work that we require, um, that's something that we keep throughout the year. So at any point that a Starfish student is at Starfish, a parent can call and we sign them in and sign them out. We also do home visits where we come into the homes because sometimes a child comes into Starfish and we don't really know. If we don't know what is happening at the home, it doesn't work very well. We also have a mother's group because if your mom is unhappy, you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. No matter what we do at school, mm -hmm. when you come home, you have to meet that. So we have a mother's group where we provide mental health and all of that support for the mothers and where they can just come and relax and have fun and laugh and talk. And so those are ways in which we have Starfish be a family. But in addition to that, people can come and volunteer. And then the biggest teaching that we do at Starfish, I feel, other than through service, is actually the people that come as guest speakers and talk to our students. Because they come and they share their life experiences. The students ask them questions. And so when I'll be talking to a student a year after, for example, you've come to visit, they'll say, you know, I was going through this difficulty. And then I remembered what Uncle Tuff said about mm -hmm. when he was going through a similar difficulty, mm -hmm. what happened? 
And so because of that, our students are very resilient, but it is anchored in real life experiences mm -hmm. of Gambians that they can relate to and say, Auntie Hassan did laundry by hand. Mm -hmm. She went mm -hmm. to the market. She mm -hmm. cooked before she went to school. Mm -hmm. She swept and mopped. If she can do it and do this, then yeah, I, can I can do, do it. even yeah. more. Excellent. But what sort of encouragement do you have for, for our viewers? People are listening now. What, what, what sort of encouragement do you have for them? The encouragement I have, I believe, is that um, for anything to last, it has to be a spiritual enterprise. So if you look at buildings and you look at anything else that, that has lasted many generations, those that, you know, you build a building, you name it after somebody, development happens, they break that building, and then a new building comes up. Mm. And then 100 years later, you're forgotten. But it is those things that you do for God's sake. It is those things that attach the, another person's spirit mm -hmm. that keeps your work alive. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at that, we have to think about integrity always. Doing what is right instead of what is easy. Mm -hmm. And so doing what is right in our context means that there are a lot of people suffering all around the world. And mm -hmm. we each have to look at ourselves and say, what do I have to offer the world? And then everything else you need will come to. But first, just who are you? What do you have that you can offer the world for God's sake and do it for that reason? No, excellent. Actually, you know, um, uh, I'm sure you've had this question before um, uh, where, uh, okay, starfish, people, people must be asking, but what is in there for you? Right. You know, you know because here yes. we are all wired towards, not here only, but, but I think it's, it's also a natural phenomena that yes. you must be doing something because you expect something back. Yes. You know, so, and again, coming into the locality, uh, putting your time, your money, your resources, everything, you know, hard work. I've yes. been there, I've seen what you do. Yes. People must be asking and wondering, but what is she getting back from this? Yes. You know, can you elaborate on this? What is it that, that is there right. that makes you going? That, you know, um, you've mentioned integrity, which is yes. key in, in leadership. Yes. In, and for any person to, to, to be humane, you need to have integrity. Yes. Gom uh, sabopa. Right. You know, and, and I, I can feel that coming from you. Yes. That this, there's something in your inner self yes. that you believe in. And therefore, integrity is very strong, uh, you know, in you. Yes. But elaborate further, what is it that people don't know that you are getting out of this? Apart, well, a lot of time, as I said, people will think that there is always, you know, a return, material return yes. in any investment that you put in. But you are getting more than that. I am. And something different. <laughs> yes. So tell your viewers, what is it that you're getting? So I think that... Um, Yes, I think when I talked about servant leadership, I talked about how um, it's sweat, blood, and tears, but what you get out of it is so much more than what you fit into it. And that's just the way service works, mm -hmm. sacrifice works. If you sacrifice, you definitely get more. For me, it's two things. One, when I was eight years old, my parents went through a very painful divorce, and mm -hmm. I watched my mom lose everything. Mm -hmm. She left the house with just the clothes on her back. And I watched her build, she lost custody of the kids, all of it. And I watched her build herself back up. She got a job, she got an apartment, she regained custody of us, and she has sent all her children to college. Looking at my mom suffer at eight years old, I thought, when I grow up, I want to do something so that no woman feels as helpless as my mom must have felt that night. And no girl feels as scared as I felt that night. And so for me, this is healing the more girls and women and boys that I help through to find their true selves and their spiritual selves connected to being financially independent, the more hope I have that there will be less suffering in the world because mm -hmm. of that. So that's big. But secondly, it orders my life. Mm -hmm. So I always say I can stay anywhere and go to sleep right away because these young people challenge me always. If it comes to vulnerability, if it comes to honesty, whatever spiritual quality I want to work on has to be tested in the field because I'm an example for them, but I'm also working with them. So they have to see all of that. And so it makes me a better human being, I feel like. And then most importantly, I think my kids. My kids, when they watch me talk about how you serve the world, they're right there seeing it. 
And so the different people that they interact with when they interact with you, other people, the starfish girls, they are challenged to be better human beings. And I feel like the best gift you can give this world is to leave a generation that is better than you. And so I always say I'm the richest Gambian I know because the generation I'm leaving behind not only gives me hope, but gives my parents hope and gives future generations hope. Today, we ended up a visit to starfish in uh, the new land that they have. It's, a, it's an eight hectare land and it's very futuristic. Uh, I've gone around with uh, the founder or the co-founder, Madam Yas Imam Yasin Sar. You know, and we've walked around, uh, looked at um, the existing trees, uh, you know, which is a very, um, uh, what is it, ex exquisite? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and? Mesmerizing. And mesmerizing. <laughs> you know, I'm mean, always in the background, but you know, I'm more digger angle. She's the one who's very good at English. But anyway, look, it was fun. Um, uh, and I, as I said earlier, I would urge, you know, uh, us as Gambians to embrace, you know, initiatives like this. Uh, she's here in the background doing a lot of work for the community, for the country. And uh, this is her vision. This is the, what she's thinking for the future. Um, I cannot list everything out. All we want to say is uh, one word, and I have to translate this in, uh, from Wolof to English, because my spiritual father that everybody knows, Saint Abdul Aziz Al Amin, always tells me this. He says, Mustafa, Jerejef, Barbututila, Waikudefu Daradokudega, Bondok Jerejef. Thank you. <laughs> And one of my favorite words in Wolof is Nyokoboka. Wow. So Nyokoboka, whereas in English you say you're welcome and you take all the credit. Yeah. Nyokoboka means I wouldn't be here if you weren't here. Ubuntu. You paved the way, yeah. you continue to pave the way yeah. and to support. Today you came and you spent your whole afternoon here. You've gone everywhere we wanted to take you. And I think with every single part, whether it's the young people we're working with or the land, I love the sense of positivity and I was telling them the sense of honesty that you have. For me, that gives a sense of safety in safe spaces. And I always say a safe space cannot be a safe space if there isn't honesty in it. So thank you. You've challenged us. You've inspired us. You have supported us. And we think anything else that comes in the future is a bonus. I think that this visit will be a time where we can say somebody in the Gambia came and they believe, just like we do, that if our dreams don't scare us, yeah. if they're not big enough to scare us, then we're not dreaming yeah, not dream. properly. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. thank you for seeing uh, what we see, that health, education, and agriculture is something within reach for all Gambians, and that the young people are the present and the future, and that together we can do this. If we're infighting, it's because we don't understand the assignment, which is there's enough work for everybody yes. to do, and yes. we can all see yes. where God calls us to do our work, and yeah. then we do it. So thank you, thank you so much. for coming and Just supporting here, us. Bla, bla, joy, man, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the Tough Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by Tough Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the Tough Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. As you know, the TAF Hub is one of the initiatives under the TAF Africa Foundation. And we are trying to inspire the youth of this country. We cannot do all this by ourselves. So we look out to Gambians who are doing so well in the diaspora and about common holidays to the Gambia. If you know anybody that can inspire the youth that is doing so well in their own areas, please send us an email on this email that's shown on the screen. Okay.